Before you watch this video, I want you to keep in mind that New York is easily in the top five states in the country with the harshest forms of gun control laws, and that the laws in New York City are even more strict than the other cities in the state. City reeling from a holiday weekend of gun violence, with police reporting dozens of shootings. Between Saturday morning through last night, at least 11 people have died. The NYPD says there were 37 shooting incidents over the weekend, with a total of 56 victims. And two more people were shot this morning. From the Bronx to Brooklyn, Manhattan to Queens, and Staten Island, all five boroughs far from free of gun violence this Independence Day weekend. Something got to be done because it's, 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 it's just way out of hand. The violence flowing into Monday morning. Chopper 2 flying above a double shooting in downtown Brooklyn, which sent a 65 year old man and 31 year old woman to the hospital. Hours earlier in bed a 25 year old man was shot in the stomach. 77 year old John Samuel walked out of his home this morning to the crime scene. It's sad and, and, and it's, it's hurtful, really. You know, just so evident that we're in, a, we're in a bad time right now. Ever since the death of George Floyd, everything is changing when it comes to policing. The mayor says while he's making good on his police reform promises, he's also putting an end to gun violence in the city, starting with a grassroots plan involving the community. And it rolls out Friday night. Increased NYPD presence at hot spots at key locations, more patrol officers on foot in vehicles. Community leaders, community organizations walking with police officers showing common cause. So how is this possible? I thought all of the gun control laws were supposed to prevent and stop all of this type of violence. Do you know how hard it is to legally get a firearm in New York? You can't just walk into a gun store and buy a gun. You have to have a license and not just one license. You have to have a license to buy handguns and another license to buy rifles and shotguns. And these applications aren't free. You have to pay $340 for a handgun license and $140 for a shotgun and rifle license, plus $90 for fingerprinting. That's $570 just to get permission to buy a gun. But crying out loud, the application to buy a gun costs more than the average price of an entry level handgun. And the process takes up to six months, if not more. And don't think you'll be able to just conceal carry a gun either because getting a concealed carry license in New York City is virtually impossible. New York City has a May issue directive, which means you can fulfill all the requirements to get a concealed carry license, like getting background checks, uh, permit training, pay all the fees, and still they can tell you no just because. In 2011, New York City had a population size of about 8 million people. Want to know how many people actually had a concealed carry permit? 4,000. And the majority of those people were retired cops, security guards, and celebrity. And on top of this, in New York City, you have to register all of your guns. They have universal background checks, an assault weapons ban, a high capacity magazine ban. They don't respect any outside concealed carry permits. And if you're a non-resident traveling to New York City, the last thing you want to do is bring a gun. I declared my gun because I always do. I travel, I fly in and out all over the U.S. with it. Patricia Jordan carries her gun for protection. She correctly followed all the TSA procedures when she flew from her home in Georgia to New York City. It's in a TSA case, everything's separate, it's locked. She was traveling with three teenage girls and wanted her gun in her hotel room. I know that if something happens, uh, then I can protect myself. I was glad that she had brought it just in case something did happen. On their way home, Patricia did everything correctly again. The airline counter, she again told the agent she wanted to check her gun. But this time she was told, wait. The next thing I know, they're, they're getting ready to arrest me. For what exactly? For having a gun. I thought I was going to pass out. I really did. I have my permit. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to right. Of course, I started freaking out. She sat there and begged the lady, please don't arrest my mom. Please don't arrest my mom. She's like crying, begging her not to take me. The police put Patricia in jail and told her, you've committed a felony. The minimum was three and a half to seven years mandatory prison for this. Truth be told, in some cases, simply holding certain guns as a non-resident is illegal. Holding a firearm as a non-resident makes you a felon in New York. Me picking up and touching one of these guns, I'm breaking a law here. Correct. That's actually considered a felony in New York. That's a felony. It's a felony. Just for me touching a gun. Yep. Because holding a firearm as a non-resident makes you a felon in New York. It's pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> it is outrageous. It serves no purpose, yeah. none whatsoever. What, what happened here? When did we stop being the United States? I say all that to ask this one question. 
Why aren't these gun laws working? If there was ever a time these gun laws should be working and keeping guns out of the hands of criminals, it should be now. If gun control was so effective, none of these criminals would have the guns they have to commit these crimes. But here we are in 2020, and they not only have these guns, they're slaughtering people with them. So much so, the mayor is scrambling, trying to do something about it. And the reason he's scrambling is because he can't blame it on a lack of gun control this time, because New York City has all the gun control in the world, and it's not stopping this violence. I don't think people realize how ironic it is that there are no gun control plans in this plan whatsoever. We're talking about a city that prides itself on its gun control laws and brags about how it made New York City so much safer over the years. But now that there's a massive increase in shootings, despite what gun laws are in place, how interesting it is that now you want to try a more nuanced approach to solving the issue that doesn't involve infringing on people's rights. I always get funny looks when I say gun control is not about stopping criminals, it's about controlling people. The anti-gun politicians know they cannot stop criminals from getting guns. And truth be told, they don't really want to stop them because these anti-gun politicians need the chaos that these criminals create to justify creating more laws that require law-abiding citizens to give up more rights and power to these anti-gun politicians because they know that if there are no monsters that people need protection from or if the people are able to protect themselves from the monsters using their two-way rights, then these anti-gun politicians would then be forced to do the hard work of actually getting to the bottom of what drives this type of violence. But that solution is complex and long-term and doesn't make for a neat little good campaign slogan come re-election. Right now, there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and clicking the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you want to keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia. I lost all my guns in a boating accident and your state specific Keep America Tactical shirt. Click the link next to my head or the link in the description section. Or if you're watching this on a mobile device, tap the small triangle on the lower right hand side of this video and click the link in the description.